welcome to Frisbee Golf TV. This is Yonina, the Frisbee guy. I got a special visitor with us in the studio. 2009 World Champion, 2013 Sula Open uh, Champion as well for the Norwegians there. The natural born disc golfer, Eric yeah. Denkins. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you, thank you. So Norway, you have a, you have a relationship with Norway for quite some time now. Yeah, I've been coming to Norway over the last seven years. I've been here about three or four times um, for tournaments up in Sula. And then I uh, came to Oslo a few times to visit Espen, hang out here, play some courses, and really just trying to just really dive into the culture of disc golf in Norway. And it's it's cool to come back and come to visit and, and hang out with my friends. Yeah. Uh, how about just give us a little bit of a, of a background uh, story? Because you come from a, a very pronounced, I guess, uh, disc golf family with sure. both uh, not only your sister, but your father and your mother as well. How, how about give us just a little rundown of... Uh, or the old uh, story of Avery Jenkins. Sure. Uh, come from a disc golf family. Uh, grew up around disc golf, and disc golf was always a part of our culture and family. And and my parents started early '80s, and they were always at the course, playing the course. And as I grew up, I was always a part of that with them when they went to the course. I might play a few holes here and there while they played, and then the rest of the time I would go be busy in the woods or go run around picking up sticks or whatever <laughs> but as I grew up I started playing more and more holes getting more involved in the in the rounds playing a lot more golf and then I started actually traveling with them to tournaments and with uh, just the traveling we go play tournaments I played junior tournaments I did fairly well as a, as a junior and I progressively just grew up and got better at it and then when Valerie came along you know I was I was still a little bit older than her, but she was always a part of the sport. I started when I was about six years old, seven mm -hmm. years old. She started since the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> and we are we are called the, the first family of disc golf. Not because we're the first family to ever play disc golf, but we're most we have the most accolades, most tournament wins. We have a lot of world championship titles. Yeah, because in our you got—I can't imagine the trophy wall you got at home. Because your father won several uh, national tours in the right. U.S. Right. Your mother, three world champions, three isn't world it? championships. Yeah, you're the 2009 world champion, Correct. and then your sister, three world three champions as well. Yeah, you yeah. have more than 50 wins on P PDJ. Yeah. So you have to be one of—it's like you said, the first family, I guess. Right, right. Yeah? And where we're taking disc golf, just as far as like. Just tournament finishes and our, and our titles, you know, that's great recognition that way. But where we take disc golf beyond just being a player, what we're trying to do to grow the sport. I know Valor, my mom, they're doing awesome things for women's disc golf right now. They're trying to grow the sport in yeah. that direction. World global, the event, the women's PGA. global, exactly. And then everything they're trying to do with clinics and and teachings, but also my parents, the way they run junior events and they install courses, and they're just really trying to get just trying to grow the sport in a lot of ways and by having more courses you're producing more players and then everything I'm trying to do right now from teaching to installing courses, designing courses and obviously commentary with the Disc Golf World Tour is a lot of things going on right now besides just being a player Yeah. and we're all doing great things right now and just it's very, I don't know, very inspirational yeah. to be part of such a family that does so much for the sport beyond just being a player themselves but we all do our part to help grow the sport. Yeah, it's, it's a big legacy and uh, you just uh, had a, um, a child yourself. I did. Just a little uh, little time ago. I did. So when do you think he's going to have his uh, first uh, ace run? Yeah, no, it's... I. I'm teaching him how to throw. He's tossing the disc around a little bit. He's uh, 16 months old now, so just over a year. And I know it's gonna it's gonna bring a tear to my eye when I watch him throw for the first time. I know <laughs> when he throws a shot, either, you know, forehand, backhand, however he throws it, just it's gonna be incredibly exciting to watch him throw that shot because it's gonna be, you know, the next generation, the next coming of the Jenkins family. And then along with that, I'm gonna just even add the family. We have a new addition over the last year or two is Nate Doss, marry my sister Valerie, and there's another three world titles to the family. <laughs> As you grow the family, you, need, you have a... You need a bigger trophy wall. Sure, sure. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a family of uh, well-recognized as golfers, and we love what we do, and we keep on doing it. Talking, you, you mentioned just uh, quickly about your commentary with Spin TV, mm -hmm. and uh, of course, uh, me, myself, as a, as a fan of, of yours and, and pro golf, disc golf uh, in general, um, are you now sort of done with the international top player Avery Jenkins and going more to the promoter Avery Jenkins, or what are your thoughts on uh, on your new role? So to speak? Yeah, that's 
I wear a lot of hats. I do a lot of duties and have a lot of different responsibilities now. And like I said, I'm transitioning from a player to more of the business side of the sport, doing a lot more with Disc Golf Park, a lot more course designs and installations, but also doing a lot with the World Tour, being a commentator. And as far as the big World Tour events, I'm set. I'm, I'm gonna be a commentator on those. I committed to doing that and that's my responsibility. But I also feel I can do a lot more for the sport in that venue on the media side than I could as a player any other time at these World Tour events and they're continuing to grow and just to be there and be a part of that and helping grow that even with my name or you know UC or Dismania or you know any of all the sponsors we have with the World Tour we're just doing our part to get recognized and get that media coverage and really tie you know try to take it to a next level and I still play I still play about eight to ten tournaments this year I have scheduled and then just super busy traveling to Europe three times this summer, doing a lot of teachings, doing a lot of deep in the game instructional clinics, and just keeping disc golf busy. If yeah. anything, I'm not playing a lot of tournaments, but man, I'm, I'm playing a lot of courses. We're, yeah. we're traveling throughout Sweden over the last week, and even Norway getting here yesterday, and I think we're up to 12 courses in the last four days. Yeah. So we're, we're stopping <laughs> and playing strong. everything we can possibly see, and I, it's all about learning. If you can play a lot of courses, you get to see the goods and the bads. You get to see what courses need, what courses that have great amenities, and try to you know incorporate that in the future designs and future layouts, and just try to make the sport better. Yeah. So it's, it's cool to see all these, uh, the growth of sport in Europe, the growth of sport throughout these countries, and you know I love coming over here and being a part of the European disc golf. Talk a little bit about it, because now you are on a tour. Of course, we see you, at least I see you a lot on YouTube. Yeah. Uh, see a lot of uh, just uh, the legacy of, uh, of the family and you. And now, all of a sudden, you're, you're here in Oslo. You've been all throughout Sweden, Finland. Tell me a little bit about uh, what this tour is all about. Getting more personal with uh, fans and, and disc golfers sure. in, um, in Europe. Sure. We're taking the... Dis, uh, the deep in the game disc golf clinics, instructional clinics that we have on YouTube, and we're trying to just bring a little more of a, like a live show, a, a, a very uh, intimate feeling for it. But by being live and me being there to instruct players, I feel like I can um, I'll give a more a thorough analysis by picking and giving more feedback and critique of every player that throws. You can watch videos all you want. A lot of players learn by watching YouTube videos these days. You watch these kids throwing some incredible shots and where they learn it, they watch it. Lots of YouTube videos, lots of disc golfers throwing and they mimic and very, they, you know, they, they get their knowledge from a lot of YouTube and watching videos. Our Deep in the Game series, we did it four years ago. Very successful. A lot of players learn, you know, learn from disc golf, learn from the Deep in the Game videos. And I get compliments on it all the time. It's great to see that they've taken their game and improving as a player from these videos. And so the whole idea behind it was, we have this video series, we have this brand, let's get out there and, and teach one-on-one, -on -one. go out there and teach groups, travel throughout Finland, Sweden, Norway, teach. I've also been down to Germany, Austria, Czech Republic. You know, and we actually plan on going to Estonia later this year, mm -hmm. Estonia and Latvia. So getting a lot of coverage throughout Europe, and it's very well received. There's a lot of players showing up there, filling up the turn or filling up these clinics and being a part of this, you know, awesome event. But it's an experience overall. You yep. know, these players, they come there, they want to see me throw, they want to be a part of this event, <laughs> be there with their friends, but they're learning and they're dedicating time and they're investing in their future as improving as a player. So deep in the game, it's it's a good thing happening. I'm just very fortunate to take it to Europe as much as I've traveled throughout you know the US teaching deep in the game with Simon Lazat. Now he's got his own thing. He's doing flying circus events all over Finland right now. I'm through Sweden and Norway right now. So we got Scandinavia covered as a whole, even this, you know, next couple of weeks, even Simon for the next month over in Finland. So yeah. it's exciting times. Absolutely. I gotta say that uh, living over here in Europe, we don't have that many big stars uh, if you look at uh, disc golf of course you have KJ you have Simon you have Sepp Apayu, you yeah. have some good names even a Norwegian Espen uh, Mökelad uh, has done his I've heard of him yeah I've, yeah, heard, I've heard, heard of him, him. as well um, so you coming over here um, is I, I would say is uh, inspiring to to new kids how does it make you feel that the the younger players now looked at you at one point and looking what you were doing taking that into the game throwing farther um, even more precise yeah. and now the the things that the the young guns like uh, Rick Vaisaki like uh, Samuel Assad Paul Macbeth mm -hmm. um, they are setting the new standard 
How do you see sort of the, the future evolving from that high level of, um, of standard which was set by you, upped by the next generation and just yeah. continue going? Where do you, do you see it end anywhere? I hope not. <laughs> I, I want to see it grow, progress, develop. Um, and I'm not certainly the one that created all this. I got my inspiration from idols that I looked up to, from like a Ken Klein, to a Barry Schultz, even like older players from back in the day. I'm gonna say Dave Greenwell, who's been a, been to Norway as well. And you look up to these disc golfers as idols when I was growing up as a kid, being around the sports since I was six years old. My parents being very uh, in the loop of disc golf and being part of the family, uh, very very tight with a lot of players. And I was, I was around all these disc golfers at a very young age and knew them personally as friends. And growing up to where I'm at now, they're still lifelong friends and they're so big into disc golf. I kind of feel I'm a good transcendent from like the older generation to the newer generation of golfers. And it's an honor. Yeah. It's an honor to be able to, you know, inspire and uh, maybe help develop and help bring along these newer players and for players that are just starting off now that you know know me from what I've done as a player to know me what I've done in instructional clinics and, and, and deep in the game it's just great to see there's so much love for the sport and so much passion and these players are coming out and, and showing that and it's cool to see this progression as players come and go and you know you see Paul McBeth taking this sport to the next level. I try to take it as far as I could. I know Ken Climo and all them took it as far as they could. It's a passing of the torch, yeah. absolutely. And to see where these new players are taking it, it's very, very inspiring and very exciting yeah. to see where disc golf's gonna take off, what's gonna be in the next five, the next 10, and to see what Europe's gonna do in those in that same progression. So, very exciting times. It's, it's awesome to be part of it. Yeah. So now you've been in Norway for a little bit of time. You know Norway from uh, from the past, um, and of course in uh, in sort of the disc golf environment in Norway, everybody's saying, "Oh, it's in it's increasing, it's getting bigger and bigger." But then, uh, if you look a little bit from the outside, maybe it's not exploding as mm -hmm. you would think if you're uh, in the middle of uh, of, uh, of the attention. Um, what would you say, looking as an outsider in on the Norwegian disc golf? Um, uh, community, how could we not only grow the sport but uh, try to catch up with, uh, let's say, the Finns, which are uh, quite a few milestones um, in front of us? Sure. What can we do as uh, both players or, or just contributors to disc golf in Norway to to make sure that the Finns don't totally out uh, outrun us? Sure. I I don't see anybody catching the Finns anytime soon. <laughs> they're they're uh, the whole setup right now. The way they set themselves up for this growth, this massive. Uh, uh, overtaking of what disc golf is in Europe. They are the main hub of it all. Obviously in the US, it's the big market, it's the older market. We have about 80 to 85% of disc golf in the US. But when you move over to Europe, it's it's Finland, you know, and Scandinavia as a whole, you know. It was always Sweden being a big player in that as well. I think everything's kind of radiating out of Finland now. It's kind of pushing south into Estonia, pushing, you know, west into Sweden. You guys are getting a part of that as well. You guys are at 130 courses, I believe now. And to see how you guys are steadily growing and you're holding a pretty good pace as you increase, the more courses are gonna to bring to more players. Yeah. And you guys are putting in roughly about 10 courses a year in this country. And the more you put them you know, to downtown city centers and, and different hot spots where there's populations, where there's more exposure to this awesome sport, people are gonna see it. And the more people see it, they're gonna go and get involved. You bring it into schools, get young kids playing at a very young age. That's what's gonna grow the sport in this country. But in Europe in, as a whole, yeah. and that's what Finland did. They set themselves up for that, you know, to get to this far, and they're at 550, like 555 courses now, putting in like another 50 every year. And what they did, they, they, they knew this was gonna happen, but by setting up, having, and building courses, you, you build it, they will come. That mentality has really produced some awesome growth, and it's great to see. That's, that's what you wanna follow. So what Finland's doing right now, is the perfect scenario. They have the land, and the more course they get in, the more you know other municipalities want to see that course, and they want to have a course too in their city or their county. They want to make things happen. Over here, I see you're going to have a steady growth, and you're going to increase, and just take it as it is. I don't think you're going to get anything too you know too spiked or a huge increase, but you're growing, and yeah. it's, it's it's cool to see. It's really fun. I love uh, Yusuf Resma, He came with a, a quote for uh, for us where he said that uh, that the disc golf, frisbee golf, is perfect for Finns because they like to be outdoors and they like to be alone. 
And I think that would go for a lot of Norwegians as well. So yeah, there, are, yeah. there are similarities there. Yeah. So uh, before we go into a quick fire round of questions here, where you only have to answer uh, right from your heart or your gut, depending. Okay. Uh, anything else you want to add? Um, add in the end or? Yeah, just I want to say just it's it's amazing, and I don't take it for granted for any way, but. To still be able to travel and travel throughout the world, but throughout Europe and still be over here as much as I can, it's just it's amazing to see where the sport is, where the sport was 10 years ago when I first came to Europe, and to see how it's growing. And to be part of that growth, maybe be a small percentage of the reason why it's happening here, I go where the where disc golf takes me. And if it's growing in one spot, you know I'm going to be there helping out and helping teach and help improve the players and development of things. And it's just it's so so much fun to be over here. So much fun to play new courses and meet new people and players. And these events over here, these tournaments over here, and these players are just continuing to get better. So all of it all, it's just exciting times for disc golf. Well, I hope the participants uh, of your clinics and, uh, and everything are showing that as well because there are no doubt excitement getting uh, someone of your profile uh, over here as well. Absolutely. So, so with that said, we'll start uh, just a quick fire for you. It starts very slow and then uh, it's a no-brainer for, uh, for the end and we'll see okay. what we throw into the mix. Uh, cool. So, are you ready? You're ready. All right, beer or wine? Beer, absolutely. Good choice. Steak or fish? Steak. Strength or cardio? I'm a strength guy. <laughs> of course you are. Paul or Simon? Jeez, really? <laughs> I like what Paul's doing right now. I love Simon. Don't get me wrong, Simon, I love you. But I love what Paul's doing for the sport right now, and he's a very inspirational. A lot of disc golfers look up to him, and he's making some awesome things happen for disc golf. Too much thinking on a question, but good to See, I, was, I, I, had, I had to clarify for Simon. I was like, I was like damn, let me say my name. Uh, Paul's doing awesome stuff. Go he'll on. get it. Putter or driver? Uh, putter. That's where, that's where it all happens, yeah. T-Bird or Destroyer? Whew. Wow. Uh, destroyer. Love Destroyer. Love Destroyer. I always will. Norway or Sweden? Damn, are you really going to do that to me like that? Um, Sweden, because I've been there longer and I have more experience in Sweden. Yeah, but that, I love Norway. I love Norway. <laughs> I need to come over here more is what I'm saying. I need to come over here and visit and stay longer is what I'm saying. Norway is beautiful. <laughs> it is. And I need to check out more of this country and play more courses. I have more courses played in Sweden, so I'm going to say Sweden now. They're older, disc golf country, but Norway, I love Norway. and. Good to be here. Thank you. <laughs> we'll give, give everyone some time to change his mind for the next time he comes here. <laughs> Thank you very much for spending your time with Cheers. us. Cheers. Absolutely. Yeah? Thank and you so much. And go out and throw something. <laughs>